he could not fear his journey and bless his trip at the same moment. Therefore, he had to supplant his worry with confidence and a sense of security. He began to bless himself and his car as follows. I am divinely guided in all my ways. Divine love goes before me, making straight, joyous, and perfect my way. My car is God's car. It is God's idea. Its creation came out of the one mind common to all individual men. This guides me and directs me in all my movements. Divine law and order govern me in my driving, and I go from town to town freely, joyously, and lovingly. I bless all other drivers on the road. I wish for them health, happiness, and peace and right action. I am an ambassador of God. I know that all the parts of my car are God's ideas and are functioning perfectly. I am always poised, serene, and calm. I am always alert alive and quickened by the Holy Spirit. This love surrounds me and goes before me, making straight, joyous, and perfect my way. I am always surrounded by the sacred circle of God's eternal love. And divine love goes before me, making straight, joyous, and wonderful my way. During the past three years, he, is, he has had not an accident. And he has received no citations or traffic violation tickets. He began to fill his mind with these truths and crowded out of his mind all worry thoughts which had haunted him. He said, I make, made it a habit to use that prayer all the time I was on the road. I committed the whole thing to memory. It was not mumbo-jumbo. I knew what I was doing and why I was doing it. I knew I was implanting these ideas in my subconscious, and whatever is impressed in the subconscious comes forth as form, function, experience, and events. I also knew that the higher vibration of my spiritual thoughts would wipe out the lower vibration. This salesman is no longer worried or fearful. He knows that prayer changes things. This is discipline, of course. Prayer is a habit. It's a very good habit. How did you learn to walk? Didn't you... Uh, you made many attempts to walk across the floor. You fell down. You had a thought pattern. You had a, began to move your legs and so forth. Gradually, it became second nature when you walked across the floor. In other words, if you repeat a thought pattern and act over and over again, after a while it becomes a second nature, which is the response of your subconscious mind to your conscious thinking and acting. And that's prayer, too. I was in a drugstore in Detroit two years ago. The pharmacist, pharmacist invited me to come back at the counter, but he showed me a sign over the prescription department. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. That's from the 23rd Psalm. He added that his store had been robbed by gangsters three times and he had been held up twice with a gun pointed at his head. Following is the essence of his conversation. I think of that sentence of the psalm, and it falls as a blessing on my mind. I have taken this infinite presence and power within me as my partner, and I claim any times during the day, the infinite intelligence within me is my higher self. It's my senior partner. This intelligence guides me and watches over me. His power and wisdom are instantly available to me. I am not alone. Now I feel secure because I know God's circle of love surrounds the store, myself, and all my customers. I make this prayer a habit. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, for I dwell in the house of God forever. The house of God is your own mind. Your mind is where you walk and talk with God, for God is that supreme intelligence, that boundless wisdom within you. It's locked in your own subconscious depths. The pharmacist met the problem of anxiety and worry, and he overcame it. During the past four years, he's had no trouble and has prospered beyond his fondest dreams. He realized that his worry was irrational thought. It was due to downright laziness, and he became a straight-line thinker. Are you a straight-line thinker? 
Behold, I stand and knock at the door. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. This is telling you that there is an infinite intelligence, a boundless wisdom, which men call God. Knocking at the door of your heart, it opens with a, an inside latch. All you have to do is let it in and contact it with your thoughts. It will lift you up, heal you, inspire you, guide you, and open for you new doors of expression and watch over you and sustain you. That's the presence and power that heals a cut on your finger, that if you burn yourself, it reduces the edema and gives you new skin and tissue. It's that which started your heartbeat and watches over in your sound asleep. Now, it's just the same as if it were not there, except you use it. That's why I say worry is laziness. A school teacher told me that the way she overcomes all her worries is to take her worries apart. She holds them up to the light of reason, dissects, dissects them, and cuts them up into small pieces. She's a smart school teacher. And then she asks herself, are these real? Where do they come from? Do these worries have any power? Is there any principle behind them? With her cool, rational thought, she dismembers her worries and realizes they are shadows in her mind. Fallacious and illusionary. No reality, just shadows in the mind. And a shadow has no power, has it? Well, that's what worry is. It's a shadow in your mind. It has no reality, no principle behind it, no truth behind it. Her final summation is, imagine an educated school teacher like myself worrying about shadows which have no reality. She concludes by laughing her worries away. So these worries, what are they? Conglomeration of sinister shadows. I sent a friend of mine to see a heart specialist as he was worried that he had a bad heart. The specialist took a cardiogram and told him that his heart was normal and that his only problem was that he suffered from emotional spasms and seemed to be unreasonably obsessed with the idea that he had a bad heart. The doctor told him that he should artfully and subtly instill in his mind the contents of the 27th Psalm until he let go of his false idea. In a few weeks' time, he broke the spasmodic grip. He practiced the great law of substitution by repeating the good idea over and over again until the mind lays hold of the truth which sets you free and serene. That takes a little work, but you can do it. That's why I said it's discipline. It's a willingness to do it. Say, I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to meet it head on. It's a shadow in my mind, and I'm not going to give power to shadows. And so these emotional spasms, you see, were due to that. Ups he was obsessed with the idea he had a bad heart. He didn't. So uh, he was completely healed. He was healed of what? A false belief in his own mind. A short while ago, a man with a seemingly well-adjusted and composed personality came to see me, very worried and anxious because his personal doctor had told him his blood pressure was over 200. That he should take it easy and relax more. He said to me, I can't take it easy. I have too much to do, and the pressure in my organization is terrific. He was really suffering from a long-mounting accumulation of petty frustrations and worries. I expounded on the great truth that every fact of life is under the control and influence of the law of change. The old hymn says, Change and decay all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. Well, God changes not. I, the Lord, change not. The same yesterday, today, and forever. The spirit within you is always the same. Spirit is without face, form, or figure. Timeless, changeless, and ageless. Surely no one listening to this cassette thinks God is an old man up in the skies outside of yourself. God is the very life principle in you. It grows hair in your face if you're a man, and your head too, and grows your nails, and the watches over you when you're sound asleep. For he who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. That presence and power within you never slumbers or sleeps. If you want to wake up at two in the morning, it wakes you up on the dot, doesn't it? 
If your child is sick and you're dead tired and sound asleep, and you're supposed to give that medicine to your child at three o'clock, or the fever of the child goes up, that subjective intelligence wakes you up, and you're able to minister to your child. That's the presence and power of God within you. So this presence changes not. It's always the same, today, yesterday, and forever. But all conditions, circumstance, and events, circumstances and events are subject to alteration. Every created thing will someday pass away. The age-old maxim, this too shall pass away, is always true. But your mind and your spirit, the personality of you, will never pass away. You'll have bodies to infinity. You'll never be without a body. You can't even conceive of yourself without a body. So if you're worried about afterlife, you might as well forget it now. You have another body right now. I suggested that he begin to apply this simple truth to himself that he could not be sick forever, that he was here to meet all problems and to overcome them, not run away from them, that he was mentally and spiritually equipped to handle any problem, regardless of what it is, meet it head on, grapple with it courageously and say the problem is here, but infinite intelligence is here too, knows only the answer. The first step was that he had to abstract his attention from his ailments and business difficulties and trust the creative intelligence within him, which made his body, to heal and to restore him. I gave him the following spiritual prescription to take in addition to the medicine which his doctor prescribed, accompanied with the suggestion that he was to assert absolutely and believe implicitly the following simple truths. Periodically during the day, I would draw my attention from the vexations and strifes of the world, and I return to the divine presence within me and commune with that creative intelligence within me. I know I am nourished spiritually and mentally, and God's river of peace floods my mind. Infinite intelligence reveals to me the perfect solution and the perfect idea for every problem I meet. I reject the appearance of things, and I affirm the supremacy of the infinite presence and power within me. I am absorbed and engrossed in the great truth that infinite intelligence is guiding me, that divine right action reigns supreme. The miraculous healing presence is flowing through me now permeating every atom of my being. His river of peace flows through my mind and heart, and I am relaxed, poised, serene, and calm. I know the divine presence which made me is now restoring me to wholeness and perfection, and I give thanks for the miraculous healing which is taking place now. By affirming regularly many times a day in this manner, he succeeded in retrieving his senses from the annoyances and irritations of the day. And in a month's time, a medical checkup revealed normal blood pressure. He knew he was a gardener, depositing seeds in the garden, and he knew the seeds would grow after their kind. The best thing you could do is to deposit orchids in the garden of your mind. He discovered that his renewed mind restored his body to wholeness when the strain and pressure of business tend to disturb him today. His motto is, None of these things moves me. He has that on his desk. Do things disturb you? If you have no opinion, there is no suffering. You have no opinion about the headlines of the newspaper today. And where there is no opinion, there is no suffering. If the cucumber is bitter, don't eat it. If there are briars and brambles on the road you're traveling, avoid them. Tune in on the infinite. How then could you be disturbed? Aren't you disturbing yourself? Exalt divine wisdom in the midst of you. Say to yourself, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. He began to fill his mind with these truths, and crowded out of his mind all worry thoughts which had haunted him. He said, I make, made it a habit to use that prayer all the time I was on the road. I committed the whole thing to memory. It was not mumbo-jumbo. I knew what I was doing and why I was doing it. I knew I was implanting these ideas in my subconscious, and whatever is impressed in this and quickened by the Holy Spirit. This love surrounds me and goes before me, making straight, joyous, and perfect my way. I am always surrounded by the sacred circle of God's eternal love. And divine love goes before me, making straight joyous and wonderful my way. During the past three years, he has 
he has had not an accident. And he has received no citations or traffic violation tickets. He could not fear his journey and bless his trip at the same moment. Therefore, he had to supplant his worry with confidence and a sense of security. He began to bless himself and his car as follows. I am divinely guided in all my ways. Divine love goes before me, making straight, joyous, and perfect my way. My car is God's car. It is God's idea. Its creation came out of the one mind common to all individual men. This subconscious comes forth as form, function, experience, and events. I also knew that the higher vibration of my spiritual thoughts would wipe out the lower vibration. This salesman is no longer worried or fearful. He knows that prayer changes things. This is discipline, of course. Prayer is a habit. It's a very good habit. How did you learn to walk? Didn't you... Uh, you made many attempts to walk across the floor. You fell down. You had a guide to me and directs me in all my movements. Divine law and order govern me in my driving, and I go from town to town freely, joyously, and lovingly. I bless all other drivers on the road. I wish for them health, happiness, and peace and right action. I am an ambassador of God. I know that all the parts of my car are God's ideas and are functioning perfectly. I am always poised, serene, and calm. I am always alert, alive, 